Welcome aboard the BR-185 of Emirates CE. In this session, we will cover up the basic of operating the brakes on a modern locomotive. First of all, let's get us started how trains, uh, how train brake operates. First of all, train brakes operate mainly with air. You need to fill up a certain amount of air or to have a certain amount of air in the brake line to operate the brakes. In this case, to release the brakes. And if you want to apply the brakes, you need to release the air from the brake line. That's we call in. Uh, that's we call here in 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 in, in some countries uh, in an in indirect break or in even in America, um, we call it automatic train break. Let us get started. How we set up the brakes in a modern locomotive. First of all, let's go to the left. By the way, if you don't want to get bored because it's a little bit dry and listen to some music in the background, you can decide what you want to listen. It will help to concentrate a bit because it's really a dry lesson in this case. First of all, let's uh, start with the locomotive, how to get it up. We need to, we need for the, the, for the air uh, in the train, we need to power up the compressor. To power up the compressor, we need electricity. And to get electricity, we need to put up the pantograph and the main circuit breaker. The pantograph in German is called Stromabnehmer and the main circuit breaker is in, called in German Hauptschalter. Both, system, both of those systems work only with enough air. If you don't have enough air, an auxiliary compressor will start running. We call it in German Hilfslufkompressor. Then, if if they have enough air, they will get uh, the pantograph will get up and the mesocarrier will, will pop in. Then the main compressor will uh, start operating and fill the locomotive with enough air to operate the brake line and other secondary systems. The main compressor it is called in German Hauptluftkompressor. We also call the Hilfsluftkompressor in German has a shortcut HIKO. A simply name for it. So to fill the brake line you must use the reverser. The reverser in this case is right now in the neutral position. The neutral position is M for Mittelstellung. M in Mittelstellung for the neutral position will not fill up the brake line. To fill up the brake line, you must put it to forward. In forward, in the forwards position, you can then fill up the brake line. Back to the reverser, to the, to the, we call it in German Richtung Schalter, Richter. You have four, four positions, uh, V for forwards, forward, M for neutral position, Mittelstellung, O for deactivating the cab, uh, zero, or we call it zero for the deactivating the cabin, and R for rückwärts, for backward. Only in V for forward and R for backward, only in those positions, the brake line will normally fill on the, on the real locomotive. Now, when we have enabled the reverser to forward and fill up the brake, we can go to the gauges to check out if the brakes are operating. As we said already, the main compressor must work beforehand before we get uh, before we have uh, enough air in the system. To check out if enough air is in the brake system, you go with the reverser to M. M will lock up uh, will lock up the train brake lever or in this case uh, this case the valves for it to fill the line. It means the it will the the the, the feed uh, the tube which will feed uh, feed um, the brake line from the main reservoir will be closed and you can test if the uh, this, if the system got enough air already filled up. If the pressure is dropping on the gauges, you don't have enough air into the system, you still must uh, let it fill up. If you then have the, if you have an unbalanced and stable pressure in your brake line, then you can set it back to forward. Then if you have a check, then if you can see it on the gauges, how, how much pressure you have. 
First of all, you have two of them. On the bottom there is the most important and necessary one. The gauge for the brake line and main reservoir. First of all, the brake line. The brake line is the Hauptluftleitung or we call it HL, HL or HLL in German. The Hauptluftleitung is, has always a pressure of 5 bar. It can slightly deviate from 5 bar to 5, uh, 249, 48 or 53 to even 55 in some cases depending on the locomotive you are operating with. The Hauptluftleitung also requires uh, some order source from getting the air from it. In this case it's from the main reservoir. It's here in this case the red needle. The brake line is the yellow needle. In the red, in the red needle for the main reservoir it is necessary to fill up the brake line. The main reservoir is called in German Hauptluftbehälterleitung. The pressure of this uh, main reservoir should be between 8.5 and 10 bar. If the needle reaches the 8.5 bar, the main compressor will start, will start powering up and, to, and keep running until it will reach 10 bar, where it will shut down again. There are a couple of valves which will prevent the main compressor if it, should, if it shouldn't stop operating to overload the main reservoir, the Hauptluftbehälterleitung. The Hauptluftbehälterleitung or the main reservoir also fills up, as I said already, the brake line. If you have the main reservoir dropped to 4 bar, you will most likely only have in the brake line 4 bar as well. Because, as I explained already, the main reservoir fills the brake line. In normal cases, you can operate a locomotive or a normal train down to four to five, uh, five bar in the main reservoir. If it goes down, you if it goes uh, beneath the five bar, you will go nowhere and you cannot operate the locomotive properly anymore or the entire train. Next to it is the gauges above, the, uh, above uh, our bottom gauges for the main reservoir and brake line. In this case, it's for the brake cylinders. Each or there are two needles in it. Each of them represent the brakes for the bogies. If you disable one brake in one bogey, only one needle will rise. It will also rise in case of malfunctions or other care or other problems. Uh, it will reach uh, will rise only up one needle. It is mainly this gauge is mainly used to, to see if the brakes are pro, uh, are working properly on your locomotive and uh, for test cases. If you see it here, if I apply the direct brake, it will go up and down. In real life, you check it in one, and you check it with your preparation. If you do a preparation duty on your locomotive, then you will apply it in stages and then release it in stages again to keep checking it if it keeps up with the pressure which you applied via the direct brake. But we will get back later to it. The next thing we have here is the brake overcharge. We call it in German Angleicher. The brake overcharge, or I call it the soft brake overcharge in the Angleicher, is pretty limited. It only goes in some locomotives to 5 or 4 to or 5 5 bar. It is a limited it is limited because it doesn't it should overcharge the line. Some locomotives can even put more in and are not limited at all, but it's depending on the type of locomotive you are using to it. In normal cases, the Angleicher or soft brake overcharge is only used to make sure the brakes are released. The reason for this is pretty simple. If you have a long freight train, as an example, with let's say 600 meters, it can be possible you have on the locomotive 5 bar, but at the other end of the train suddenly only 48 or 47. To make sure these brakes are released, you hit the soft brake overcharge, the Angleicher, to make sure the other end is uh, the other end of the train is released as well with the brakes. It also is used if you have um, if you have a simple brake test to make sure the brakes are released even by passenger trains. Uh, 
our next, uh, our next guest in our list is a direct break. We call it in German, auch uh, the same name, direkte Bremse or Zusatzbremse, or if you want to take it, a locomotive brake or locomotivenbremse. It only operates the brakes on the locomotive in a direct fashion. That means it doesn't take, it doesn't take many valves to get into the brake cylinders. It is also not powerful enough to keep the, to keep the train from running away in case if you apply a full throttle force. If you put a maximum traction force onto your locomotive and have applied the full pressure of the direct brake, you can still start moving with the locomotive. The brake is mainly used in operation for holding the, tra for holding the train like a handbrake on a car. It means if you stop on a hill and in front of a signal, even with the automa with the AFB, you normally then apply the direct brake to it. It is also a little reminder to release a, a little reminder if you show overhastly trying to get power on your locomotive. The direct brake is also used for shunting movements. If you want to break down a single locomotive or a few cars or to reduce the speed during a shunting move. It is also used but rarely in some emergency situations if you drive a locomotive in the brake mode G, which we'll get back later to it. But it's really, really rare. And I have never seen one in real life. The next on our list of the brakes uh, is the electric brake. In this case, we will completely release it now. The direct brake operates as following. You got uh, a couple of positions. The, the most important one is the driving positions. We call it Fahrtstellung. If you don't have the electric brake in the Fahrtstellung, you will go nowhere. The reason is simple. The dynamic brake operates on electric locomotives. Uh, it turns the motors of the locomotives into generator. Uh, that means if you have applied the electric brake and try to put direction on it, you will go nowhere because the motors will still be in a generator mode. That means you cannot accelerate. To put it simple, if you don't have in the driving position, yeah, and uh, it more in some cases even the even in real life, some train drivers forget it to put it in the driving position. I wonder why they go nowhere, because they cannot apply brake, and that's because of the brake position one uh, A. It's even have uh, happens to the pros. So. It's the dynamic brake, or we call it in German, uh, or you call it in German, even the same, dynamische Bremse or elektrische Bremse, electric brake. You use it mainly to speed, for speed reduction or to start a brake maneuver, like um, approaching a platform. In approaching a platform, you, you put your in dynamic brake in the first position, then to apply even more, to reduce the speed even more, and if you then reach a certain point, you will apply then air, including it. Combined braking is necessary for a full stop in a locomotive. The reason is pretty simple why, but I will get back later to it. The next on our list is the most important part. The train brake lever. Or we call it in German Führerbremsventil, which is operating the, the indirect brake, the indirekte Bremse. The operation of this is simple, pretty simple. It got different positions <clears throat> and many important positions. First one, it got the Füllstellung. The Füllstellung is the release position, is the so-called police uh, release position here. I call it just a hard break overcharge. Because the Füllstoßstellung or the hard break overcharge is uh, without limit. You can fill up a brake line, you can even overload the complete brake line up to six bar or even seven if you want to. The Füllstoßstellung is mainly used to override emergency brakes or in some cases to trick the brake valve to get it into driving, but it's not recommended to use it uh, to use it at all because it can cause malfunctions to the brake valves and they get stuck and then you have a hot runner or I mean it is running uh, or the brakes will set the trains on fire if it goes really stupid. 
That's the first position you have here. But the main positions we have right now is the running position. For the fewer present here, it's the Fahrtstellung. In this position, the brakes are fully released and it will supply the brake line with air. If you go then down to the Fahrtstellung, you have the first position, the 1A position. The 1A position we call in German Breitnut. From there down to the brake position 7, we call it in German Betriebsbremsung. It's the normal brake you're using if you approach, uh, if you approach certain uh, platforms or stops or um, red signals. The reason why you should normally, if you approach um, red signals and platforms, you should co always only combine brake because if the dynamic brake fails and you are only dry, on, only using the dynamic brake, it can massively let you overshoot over the red signal or platform. That is why it is always recommended to, uh, to brake if you have the destination co always combined together with air and dynamic brake. The next position in our settings is the full brake service. The full brake service or full bremsstellung we call it is the maximum brake force you can have in your normal train brakes. There is no, by the way, no difference between the full service and the emergency brake position in brake force. The only difference is the appliance or the applying time of it. And full bremsstellung, you release most likely one, you re most likely released a one five bar from the brake line. Then we have the next position. The next position is important one for emergency situation and problems around your train or to support um, the emergency brakes from the systems like uh, the PCB. Ziva doesn't count in this case. Only PCB, only PCB and LCB counting or emergency brakes from your coaches behind you. The emergency brake is also used in some cases like um, an, 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 an possible collision or suddenly a drawback red signal, which is also in a dangerous situation. In this case, you go to the, for, for, to the emergency brake position, which we also call in German Schnellbremsung. The Schnellbremsung should be your last resort if something goes wrong, because it is really unhealthy and it can also harm passengers in your coaches if you are um, having a passenger train behind you. Let's go to back to the driving position and release the brake once again. Additional information to dynamic brake here in this case. The dynamic brake is by the way also, also um, thanks to the generator mode um, creating electricity. Those electricity can be feed back to the overhead line. By all the locomotives like the 111 and, and by some other locom all the locomotives like the 110, the, uh, the, break, uh, will be, uh, the dynamic brake only works with heat. That means it goes over a resistor and blows out the heat from the resistors which are, which are generated by electricity. Sadly, the German Railroad didn't think about the two regenerative brakes a long time. The Switzerland was a little bit far ahead and had this around 1970s. So, now we have the first information, we are continuing to our brakes. Now we will get up for uh, our for, for our ne next uh, um, object in this case. The, first, the next object is one little break, a little switch we have here on the board. We will now do following. We will apply and the indirect brake or the, with the Führerbremsventil, we will apply, we will release the air from the brake line. As you can see, the pressure will rise up in the, the brake cylinder. Now here you have a little switch which is called brake release. You can use this brake release button to release the, the, to release the brake on the locomotive only. When is it used? It's mainly used in, in some cases, in some rare cases for brake testing. Um, we call it in, uh, they call it sometimes in Switzerland even Bremsprobe auf Wirkung, which means they are called checking out with it if the trains or the cars in the train are operating properly with their brakes. It is also used to trick a little bit in some cases for all the locomotives with the dynamic brake in comparison, in compar um, working together with the dynamic brake. 
or it is also used to make it possible for a soft spot with a passenger train. But you have to keep the switch pulled. If you let it switch it back, it will feel filled again with air. Let's release the air completely again. The next switch in our, in our, in our subject here is the sand, a sand switch. The sand is necessary if you don't have enough if you don't have enough friction power between the uh, if you don't have um, enough friction power for the rails with the wheels. If you have a slippery rails from rain or maybe even oil and dirt, you can apply it to it to, um, to increase the friction between the wheel and the rails. It is also used in in emergency situations. If you have like an uh, if you have like an PCB uh, e-brake, then you supply the, the PCB brake with the emergency position and then pull the sand lever because it can be possible you have a dangerous situation. You also need to report the, the use of sand beneath a certain speed to the signaler because it is quite possible to isolate yourself the sun from the from, to isolate yourself from the rails that means the contacts will not uh, will not know anymore that you are on the rails and you will disappear from the radar from the signal box this is, could be a dangerous situation because the signaler can, will, would be able to think his track is suddenly free naturally he will call them back if everything is all right that is why you then call or contact the signal and tell him you will send it bis until you stand still. If you don't, can you then reach him with the normal call? With the normal call, then you have to do use the emergency call in this case. The next subject in our in our precious precious lesson here is the switch beneath the beneath our um, our table. The first one is the electro electric and pneumatic uh, switch. Electric pneumatic switches that does following. Internally, as long the locomotive is uh, operating normally, you have a computer which tells the locomotive how to brake and how to operate the brakes. If you have if you have internally two uh, brake computers telling you how to do it, one is always active, the other is for reserves. If one is going, one is broken or suddenly have a problem, he will switch to the reserve one and will operate and will continue to operate normally. If both goes down, you can use the switch here. In the position of electric, it will go over the computer. As long have you have the switch like this, that's the normal position. If you put it on the pneumatic and onto the pneumatic part. It will switch uh, switch away from the computer. Will only use mechanical parts uh, to for operating the brakes. Like this, you can always operate a locomotive even with all brake computers failing. The next, uh, the next, uh, okay, the next thing we have here is the emergency brake valve. We call it in German Ackermann ventil. The Ackermann ventil or emergency brake valve is always active. It means you can always pull it even if the complete uh, or even if the comp uh, even if the locomotive is running cold. If you then pull it, you will release the air from the brake line. The brake line will will blow out the, uh, this um, emergency brake valve will blow out the entire air from the brake line and will apply the brake to the entire train. It is always possible. By the way, the same is possible with the Führerbremsventil with the train brake lever. The train train brake lever or the, the indirect brake lever is always the emergency position is always active even by the activated cabin. If you pull it and down to the emergency brake posi uh, position, it will release the air from the brake line completely. That means it will apply the brakes as well. So the next thing we have here is on the back plate of our cabin. There are uh, new switches we have here. First of all, did both the both yellow buttons here on the top? Those are the parking brakes or Festhaltebremse, or we call it in German Federspeicherbremse. It is applied and to release with those buttons, and you apply it only if you want to go home, uh, if you want to pack your stuff and go home. 
and the train is uh, staying there for a certain amount of time. If you forgot to if you forgot to enable, if you forgot to apply the brakes, and as long the train is running, it can be possible it can roll away as long you don't have any brakes applied. This system also operates without uh, without being active at all, uh, without being comp uh, aggressive active at all. That means if the locomotive is completely shut down or running cold, it is still being it's still being watched by the system. That means you can release those brakes with a cold locomotive if you put enough pressure into the brake line. Then it will disable the parking brake on its own. It will also enable it on its own if you uh, release the complete air from the brake line again. It is also being watched if you run, if you run, if you let it, or if you pull the locomotive. That means if there is something wrong in the system, the parking brake will cause an dynamic, will cause an um, emergency brake and e brake. It will also cause an e brake if you try to apply it above a certain speed. It will go then into the brake and apply it on a, apply it itself until you release it again. It is also being watched if there is some kind of malfunction, which will also cause a kind of emergency brake. The next switch in our blackboard is stored the NBUAP switch. The NBUAP switch is for the emergency system, emergency brake, emergency brake system, or for the emergency brake override system. It means it overrides emergency brake. If you set it in zero, it does nothing. If you set it to DB and you have compatible coaches for passenger coaches, then it will operate in the NBU, the Notbremsüberbrückung, the emergency brake override system. It is also enabled on an additional system, which is the EP line. The EP line or EP, um, the EP line, um, it reduces massive uh, in a massive way the apply the applying and releasing of the bra train brakes in the entire train. That means if you only touch them with EP active uh, slightly if you are bremse with the train brake lever, it will instantly apply the brakes and release it if you put it back to release it in a couple of maybe five seconds. It is really that fast and rather unusual and rather uh, difficult to use if you didn't use this, uh, if you are not used to it. Because we don't have uh, passenger coaches behind us, it's normally set for uh, freight trains in zero. There were also trials with running the electric uh, with the EP brakes for uh, for uh, for some freight tra for freight trains overall, but it was cancelled. It also needed an additional uh, connectors behind uh, behind the locomotive. The next one on our our list here on our backboard uh, is the driver's brake in valve. It's a little but it's a small button which will like up. If you have it enabled, it is mainly used if you have a car in case of malfunction. You have to use the other cabin to drive the locomotive and still have to say, to use a worker here to watch the way where you are driving. It is also used if you have a banking service. That means if you completely call, uh, if you that means if you completely connected your train with the odd with the bank uh, with the train uh, with the train you want to bank. That means the brake line, also the brake line are connected. If the brake line are connected with this uh, switch, you um, you prevent uh, the, you prevent this locomotive from filling up the brake line. That means the uh, the, uh, the leading uh, leading locomotive can operate his tra brakes normally, and you can do nothing in this case. Because there's a little problem if you have a second uh, locomotive which will fill up the line, braking becomes rather difficult because you will not able to release a certain amount of pressure in the brake line, and it can can cause you cannot brake on time suddenly because an another train, uh, another locomotive is filling up your brake line, and you don't know it. It's a difficult thing, and also a dangerous thing. The next on our list is one of the most important and newest features from trains in the world. It's the brake selector or brake mode selector. 
It got three different, uh, three different mods. The mods are G, P and R. G is for freight train scooter züge, P is for passenger trains passenger züge and R is for rapid. What does it do? It's pretty simple. First of all, let us sit down on our seat of uh, uh, thousands question. First of all, as you can see, if I apply the brakes, it will normally go up. It will normally apply the brakes. We are now again in the full bremsstellung in the full service position, and as you can see, the pressure of the brake line is down to three uh, to three five bar. And also the pressure of the brake cylinders are going up to free free, which is the normal operation. It also takes only a couple of seconds to release the brakes. Around uh, for releasing brake, it takes maybe around uh, 10 seconds, even 15 in some cases. That is the norm. But now what happens if I set it to G, to Güterzug? Well, that's pretty simple. You will now see in a full service position the brakes apply much much slower. The reason for this is pretty simple. It is there for preventing the preventing the train from squeezing and stretching too much via the brake forces. It's mainly used. Uh, G is mainly used if you have a heavy train, like uh, above 800 tons or 800 tons. You set the locomotive to G. If you have above two, uh, 1,200 tons, you set the locomotive in the first there are five cars in G. And as I said already, it's there to prevent stretching and and squeezing the the train too much. Because it can also damage the couplings, and if you have a train which will break apart during a drive and block in, in a blocken route, that's relative unhealthy and creates an emergency situation. Because maybe in some unlucky accident, it can also let run another train into your lost car. Just imagine it suddenly a car appearing in front of you. You will shout, uh, I am shout and try uh, to stop it with the schnell bremsstellung emergency brake position, but uh, you most likely will, will not have um, enough time to, uh, to see, you will not make it in time. And you will crash directly into the car. And that is why you have G to, to prevent this or reduce the possibility of a brake up, break up car, of a brake up car. So now we will ready to release and test set the 2R. As you can see, the release time from the G takes a lot of uh, takes a lot of seconds. The applying time is like uh, for 40 seconds, and the releasing time goes from 45 to 60 seconds, to a whole minute. That is why you have also to be careful with braking in G. It should be used to for the driving. If you have no idea how the track is goes. It should be recommended to slow down a little bit the speed if you drive a train in G. And as you can see, it takes a lot of time, or even the brake pressure. And also, as you can see, the brake, the pressure, and the brake cylinder was again by free free bar. Now we will set it on R. When is R used? It's pretty simple. It is the most efficient brake position. It is mainly used in passenger trains or in single single or double traction running locomotives, lonely low double traction running locomotives. Then it's required to set the most efficient position because you are most likely your speed will be then the maximum speed of your locomotive, which means 130 kilometer power in this case. That means you require more brake force to stop the train on time if you have a certain situation or you want to stop in that now or you want to stop on st on spot in front of a signal. That is why you have the R positions. The R positions are also enabled by coaches and other locomotives uh, additional equipment like the hohe Abbremsung, niedrige Abbremsung, which is more low brake force translated and also some stuff like magnetic brakes for coaches or even the so-called Schnellbremsbeschleuniger for the coaches. That's what our position does. It also increases in the most locomotives and most trains than the pressure in the brake cylinders to increase the brake force to stop on time with certain speeds. 
that is why you have arms from our position. So, I guess that covers up more or less the basics of the of breaking operation. If you have any question, leave it in the comments. And you can ask me around about every minute if you want to. If you find any errors, uh, tell me and then I will uh, then I will improve it maybe with the next video or maybe explain it in an additional video if, uh, if I did something wrong. I will cover up in some cases additional videos for locomo for special locomotives for the future. And as I said already, sorry for the try lesson, but it's necessary to explain some of the stuff. I still hope you like it. And see you for the next time.